Hello, welcome to Pia Academic. You are watching Dental String. We'll discuss about junctional epithelium. It is a part of periodontium. Let's imagine a tooth which is having dentine and enamel and cementum. The collar, the gingiva, is also present. This collar-like band is the junctional epithelium which attaches the tooth to the junction to the gingiva. This junctional epithelium will be discussed in detail. Let's start with introduction. Junctional epithelium consists of a collar-like band of stratified squamous non-keratinizing epithelium. It is like a collar with a cross section resembling a thin wedge. It is three to four layers in early life, but the number of layers increases with 10 to 20 years later on. In addition, the junctional epithelium tapers from its coronal end towards the apical end with 10 to 29 cells to 1 to 2 cells in the apical end. The cells of junction epithelium are divided into two. One, the basal layer that faces the connective tissue and the suprabasal layer which faces or extends to the tooth surface. Let's discuss the image. As you can see, this shows the internal basal lamina and an external basal lamina of the junction epithelium which is attached to enamel and the cementum. The internal basal lamina and the external basal lamina have the hemidesmosome which helps in the uh, junctional epithelium attaching the enamel and cementum. Now let's discuss formation of the junctional epithelium. The formation of junctional epithelium is by the oral epithelium of the oral cavity and the reduced enamel epithelium. However, if we see in the image that the combination of both forms the junctional epithelium. However, if we see the reduced enamel epithelium is not essential for its function, it forms on its own after pocket instrumentation or surgery and it also forms around the implant. Now, let's discuss the content of junctional epithelium. These cell layers that are not juxtaposed to the tooth exhibit numerous uh, other elements like ribosomes, lysosomes, Golgi complex which are presumably phagocytic and cytoplasmic vacuoles. Free ribosomes, Golgi complexes, cytoplasmic vacuoles and lysosomes like body which are seen in the cell layers just not juxtaposed to the tooth structure. Second, lysosome-like bodies are present, but the absence of keratinosome, that is the odland body and histogamically demonstrable acid phosphate, which are correlated with a low degree of differentiation, may reflect a low defense power against microbial path accumulation in the gingival circle. These absence of odland bodies are contributable to the low degree of power. The polymorphonucleosides are increased during the accumulation of the dental plaque and during the gingival inflammation or due to any trauma which is there. Other than that, the content is the different keratin uh, polypeptides of junctional epithelium have a particular histological pattern which shows or expresses K9 which is absent of the keratinized epithelium and the classification uh, specific cytokeratins K5 and K14. But this does not express K4 and K13, also K16. So let's discuss the attachment of the junctional epithelium. Imagine there is enamel, cementum, and the junctional epithelium is attached to it like a ball like fashion. If you see, this is the basal layer which we are drawing. This is the junctional epithelium as a whole, but this is the internal basal layer and this is the external basal layer. In it, then uh, it is facing the connective tissue of the gingiva. These are the hemidosmosomes which are present and which help in the junction, which helps in the attachment of the junctional epithelium. 
these are the epithelial cells in the junction of epithelium which consists for the cells like all complexes and ribonucleus and other activity which we will discuss further now the junction epithelium has uh, on the right side is having external basal layer and on the left side is having internal basal layer the internal basal layer is towards the tooth surface and the external basal layer is towards the gingival connective tissue if we discuss in detail the internal basal layer is also divided into two or you can see two things which are lamina densa and uh, which is adjacent to the enamel and lamina lucida that is hemidermal ones are attached to it the image shows the superficial the superficial epithelial layer of junctional epithelium enamel the hemidermal ones which are present there you can see where one is lamina densa and other is the lamina lucida The lamina densa is attached to the enamel, and lamina lucida is consisting of the hemidermal which helps in attachment of the junctional epithelium to the enamel. One should notice these is for junctional epithelium for any pathology or further basic understanding. Further, what is the role of hemidermal? Hemidermal zones have a decisive role in firm attachment of cells to internal basal lamella. And on the tooth surface, hemidermosomes are also performing other functions. Like these hemidermosomes are sites for signal transduction, which participates in the regulation of the gene expression, cell proliferation, and the cell differentiation, which is important for junction epithelium. Other, we can also see organic strands. From enamel appears to extend in lamina densa. The junctional epithelium attaches to the afibular cementum present on crown and root in the same manner. Neutral polysaccharides are in zone of epithelial attachment are also seen. Going further, basal lamella, which is of, of the junctional epithelium. resembles that of endothelial and epithelial cells in the lamellar content but it differs in its internal basal lamella internal basal lamella which does not have both collagen which is it means it is not it is involved in the production of lamellin and these in turn helps in the adhesion mechanism of the junctional epithelium to the tooth structure so lamellin is a very important part for addition of the mechanism and these should be understood well attachment is reinforced by the gingival fibers therefore a very important unit that is dento gingival unit is formed by the gingival fibers and functional epithelium now let's discuss the structure and the functional features or you can say role of junctional in the oral cavity because it is a very important part of anatomy of the periodontium for starting with it contributes to preventing pathology pathogenic bacteria flora from colonizing the subgingival tooth surface junctional epithelium formally attaches to the tooth surface forming an epithelial barrier against plaque bacteria it does not allow the plaque bacteria to come inside it or cause any harm it also allows Uh, access to gingival fluid, inflammatory cells, and components of immunological host defense to the gingival margin. Let's see this picture. Uh, let's see these rows into a picture, uh, which shows the permeability. As you can see, that the there is a gingival uh, crevice and the gingival, the gingival capillary fluid and the tooth. And as you can see that the junctional epithelium is in the red. The white marks are present. Uh, it allows the permeability of the gingival fluid and the inflammatory cells in case of any uh, harm to the junction epithelium. Also, it exhibits a rapid turnover. Why rapid turnover is important? Because it helps in better healing in case of any injury. Also, they have some endocytic capacity equal to macrophages and neutrophils, and that. these activities might be protective in nature i hope you enjoyed this session please do comment like and subscribe thank you